Hello and welcome. Orange hair, disproportionately large weaponry, but more importantly, being 4 foot 1. If you haven't guessed it already, these are the characteristics that describe the mandatory requirements to becoming death itself. And today, in Total War Warhammer 3, we're becoming just that. Playing as none other than the angry little ginger man who possesses a strong passion for murder, Ungrim Iron Fist. Now, Ungrim and I are very alike. For example, we both share the same totally reasonable hatred for the simple-minded and yet somehow considered sentient malakas known as the Orcs. So today, my friends, I'm going to hunt down all the legendary orc lords and wipe them and their stupid factions from the face of the earth. Well, everyone except Grimgor. And why, you ask? Well, it's simple. It's because I am too scared of him. Now, our journey began in the cold mountains. And the first thing I saw were some green bastards standing two inches away waiting for me. I, of course, chose violence. As soon as the battle began, I decided to send Angrim alone into the front lines with only his totally average sized legs and his gigantic axe by his side. Let's just say he made a whole bunch of little orc babies into orphans. A couple of axe wings later, Angrim got so frustrated because he had to move so goddamn much, so uh, he shot the leader orc in the back of the head with around 15 military grade rocket launchers. He did not make a full recovery. After that glorious battle, I went over to Gnarshark's lair and kindly told all the inhabitant orcs to leave town. And uh, with my first province now secured, I remembered that mods are a thing and that my beautiful ginger lads shouldn't be limited to just one or two kinds of weaponry. So I gave them some handguns and uh, some more axes, which we, they were very much appreciated. The mod also implemented other cool things such as dwarfling guns, cannons on wheels, as well as giving some random guys with pickaxes the ability to teleport while also giving them a strong need to hit infantry units extra hard. My objective for this challenge was, as I said, to make sure that almost all legendary orc factions were dead. But to do this, I actually had to make my way over to these malakas. Now with both Asag the Furry in the north and Skorsnik the Short King in the south, they were literally my next door neighbors. So after beating my starting war using way too many half-naked men, I found myself very close to Skorsnik, but I decided to leave him in the hands of some confused old man, hoping that he would finish my job for me. As I moved up north again to have a diplomatic sit down with Asag. On my way over there, he declared war on me for no goddamn reason whatsoever, which made me very sad. And in response to this hateful action, I waited outside his house, and then as soon as he stepped out the door, I killed him and all of his friends. With Asag on a temporary leave of absence, I spent the next turn hiring a mechanic with a sniper rifle, as well as recruiting more half-naked men, while also using the power of level ups to make them even stronger. And the next turn was spent standing outside Asag's house again, but this time I was screaming repeatedly for 10 hours straight. Now, as a master of multitasking, I also started a trading company with multiple Chinese people trying to elevate my not so great income. That worked great, and after that, some weird looking fella named Skulk did not like that I was laying siege to his best friend's castle, so uh, he challenged me to an axe measuring contest. Now, because my brain is wired to press every single blinking button that I lay my eyes upon, I accidentally pressed the ultra assault button and lost half my army. Anyways, instead of dwelling about the past, let's focus on the future, because the future holds even more death. Firstly, I had to replace the uh, totally necessary casualties with some fresh new volunteers. While recruiting, I saw that Thorgrim had been busy beating the living shit out of Skarsnik, leaving him with only one settlement left. Some turns later, me and Asag engaged in some not so friendly snowball fights, which eventually allowed me to borrow all of his settlements for an indefinite amount of time, making him the first target checked off the list. Now, with my main threat gone, it was time to scheme. With my next target being the mutated mix of a troll, ogre and goblin himself, the king of obesity, Grand de Ponge, who of course lived near the French coastline, I had no choice but to initiate plan mass migration. The plan was just me taking a goddamn hike through literal hell. Now this place were home to many fine creatures, such as power hungry Germans, talking purple bushes, and some angry Romanian guy who was paler than my great 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 grandma. Walking through all of this just to make it to some random mountainside where I hoped that a senile vampire would just happen to live, so that I could forcefully take his settlements for myself. Before leaving however, Angrim went on two different story missions to 
to get one magic crown and his ex-wife's forgotten cloak. In the first battle, Angrim shot an old man with giant arrows, caused a small but deadly volcanic eruption, while simultaneously beating the living f out of a dragon. And in the second battle, he killed an orc riding a pig. In between these two battles, Thorgrim managed to kill Skarsnik's faction, which proves my previously untested and unspoken theory that I indeed am a mastermind because I obviously knew that Skarsnik would die. After repeatedly calling Angrim short until he forgot that magic was a thing, while also just making him ignore 30% of all damage, because that's fair, it was finally time to move out. Oh, and uh, also, some random purple bald man declared war on me, so uh, I started the construction of a new army. Now it was time to move out. When I was traveling the countryside, I realized that in my search for golden riches, I had completely forgot to build recruitment buildings. So I basically only had tier 1 units and some regiment of renown, but I convinced myself that it was just me intentionally making it harder for myself. Obviously. Now, not long after I had departed, I stumbled across both the sentient tree and the Romanian old man. None of them seemed to like me very much, but uh, I just ignored them both and uh, walked forward hoping that if I did not see them, they would not see me. And after walking for what felt like an eternity, it was more like 5 turns or so, I could finally see our destination. And there he was, the man I was hoping to see, oh my god, thank the lucky stars, it was f***ing Orion, are you kidding me? But all hope was not lost, because perhaps Heimrich the old f***ing still owned his little castle. But before I could find out, the pale bald man from before, he attacked my defending army back at base. For some reason, the game thought that I was gonna lose this battle. Well, the game obviously don't know what happens when you shoot a giant bat in the head and then repeatedly hit that same bat with an axe to the head. End result, a close victory. After that turn, I could finally move close enough to see if Heimrich perhaps still owned his castle. Well, I found out two things. Thing 1. Heimrich did still own his castle. Hooray! Thing 2. Grom was f string tank 1. What the f***? Okay, let's take one thing at a time here. After beating up the purple bald man, he wanted peace, which I thought was absolutely perfect. So, with peace in the east, I decided to move my defending army towards the Romanian swamps because I had an idea. But before I could initiate this beautiful idea of mine, I first had to take out Heimrich. And with my newest edition of short man with flaming axes in the front, the siege of Blackstone Post had begun. I first sent a bunch of Minecraft cosplayers running towards the, the quite stylish gates actually. But I told them that Dream was behind those doors and they of course destroyed it in mere seconds. I then adapted an old technique only referenced in Sun Tzu's first edition of The Art of War. It involved sending Angrim all alone in through the newly opened gate. The enemy forces responded to this by running for their already undead lives at just the mere sight of this absolute unit. But they soon returned, so I dropped a small hydrogen bomb right on their faces. It worked quite well, so I did it again. And after that, there was not much the enemy could do but die even more than before, leaving me with a brand new castle and a decisive victory. Karl Franz rewarded me with a non-aggression pact, and now it was time to act on that little idea I talked about before. By joining Karl and his electrocounts in their war against Romania, we could pincer Vlad, making him very vulnerable. This was great, as it improved my relationship with the Germans, but also minimizing the risk of me actually dying to this vampire Malacca. So I moved in to attack the first vampire settlements, and with my new unit of uh, construction workers with giant power drills, accompanied by an Asgardian warlord, the battle went worse than I thought. Because I put my minor units in the trees, so that they would not be seen. The only problem with that was that they did get seen. So they almost died, but besides that it went great. With naked men, explosions and teleporting miners, we turned the first battle against Vlad into a massive success. Now Karl somehow went from strength rank 10 to rank 41, but that's just good, because that meant that he wanted to engage in even more diplomatic activities with me. And with my recent victory against Vladimir, I felt cocky enough to attack him again. And after lighting the enemy units on fire while simultaneously exploding the ground underneath them, yeah, decisive victory. 
After this, I genuinely believe that my four brain cells left work early because I decided to take the most unnecessary and just the worst auto resolve I have ever seen in my goddamn life. I went to Castle Tempelhof and literally lost half of my goddamn army just to end up losing this settlement to Vlad a couple of turns later. Yeah, I don't know what that was to be honest. But now, after pushing Heimrich away, it was finally time to kill Grand de Ponche. After taking the settlement only known as Gisure, he of course wasn't very happy. But leaving his weak ass feelings out of the consideration, I went on to ambush him in the nearby woods. And as you can see, it worked out great. After his very stupid defeat, I went on to steal his house. And because I was using spooky dead ghost dwarfs and catapults to use the ultimate combination of stone and goblin to kill, well, goblins, the battle was very, very soon over. After that victory, I spent some turns fighting Grom's forces using my previous tactic of beating them to the point of not being very much alive anymore. And that worked surprisingly better than I thought, since almost every other lord in the neighboring areas joined my war against him. All was going so well until I f***ed up. Because, you know, why would I not do that? After all my victories, I felt invincible. So I decided to attack another one of his settlements, and that did not work out. So, well, I retreated, but I couldn't make it to my own land, and I was also stuck in Force March. But for some reason, Grom decided that I wasn't Whoa. worth attacking, so he just left me there. But on turn 43 is where my mission gets completely screwed. You wanna know how? Well... First, Heimrich attacked me and won. Then, on turn 44, Clan Mulder attacked me and won. The reason for this attack was because I apparently joined a war against them to be able to get a stupid trade agreement with the Russians. Anyways, after that, Heimrich's little bitch, Gottfried, attacked me as well and won. Then, Ferdinand von Schwarzelhafen attacked me and won. I then became so mad that I recruited another goddamn army led by Mr. Drong so that I could fight these undead bastards and kill them once and for all because they were f***ing up my plans way too much. But I think after so much shit happening to Grom, he must have had some kind of aneurysm because he just attacked Angrim out of nowhere. I just simply auto-resolved him. Now, to be honest, I don't know how smart that actually was since I legit lost my entire frontline, but, but at least I won, right? Now with Grom's main army gone, I could focus some attention back on the mountains because we had a rat problem. So I sent my defending army to intercept, which it did. And now the enemy was dead. But back in France, this senile old man somehow almost had three full armies right outside my goddamn door. And he wanted in. And with my newborn army looking worse than a Skaven slave doomstack, I was out of options. So I decided to ignore him and take two more settlements from the fat one using some explosions and a whole bunch of bonks while also taking back my settlement in the north that the rats had stolen from me. I then saw that Grom had respawned just one settlement above from where Angrim was so I went over there and took that as well. Now there was only Heimrich to the east and a little bit of Grom to the south. Then out of nowhere an emo dude named Hans attacked me and took my settlements. So I sent Angrim down to deal with these undead malakas. But after seeing that Heimrich's armies had vanished, I looked around and I saw that they were standing right outside my goddamn walls starving out poor Drong. But they obviously underestimated him because Drong just literally murdered them all. Then I moved Angrim back to retake the settlement while I also for some reason decided to join the French military alliance. Now all I had to do was just to clear out the remaining undead and Drong once again showed his power by making an undead giant bat cat into just a dead giant bat cat. Angrim then pressed forward and took back Heimrich's little fort and after that he charged right into Marienburg and showed off his new combat sled that had a minigun strapped on top of it. And now our engineers had also unlocked an ability I like to call Magic Skyball of Death. If you then also use magic ground explosions, you get a Puric victory. Now Marienburg is no ordinary province capital. You see, its docks provide just a meager bonus of 5% increase to all tradable resources faction-wide. This made our monthly allowance a little bit better. With 
overwhelming victories in France and a beefy army back at the base, I decided to try and kill Vlad again. So I took back Eschen from some rebels. After that battle, I saw Wurzag for the first time. He was strong, but I was stronger. I continued to take more of Gorm's land until he only had one more settlement left. But before I killed him, I took out the evil version of Gandalf who had fled all the way to the northern parts of the Empire. But finally, that Malaka was dead. But Grom wasn't. Because he, he was right there. He left his only settlement to chase after my army. I mean, sure, he took back Montfort, but he left his capital city unguarded. After fleeing from Grom, I joined a military alliance with Karl France to finally lock him in as an ally. But when looking back at the map, I saw that the f***ing wood elves had already taken Grom's capital, which left him totally trapped inside Montfort. And the next turn, the French had beaten me to it, and Grom was dead. It was time to kill Wasag. My plan was simple. Make two armies in France, then move them to take out Ikit Claw, as he was bordering Wasag. With my war in Sylvania going kinda good, I felt pretty confident that this plan would work. Anyways, I kept on scheming and replenishing, and I thought everything was going well. And then I looked inside my main territory in the mountains and saw a random Chaos Dwarf faction just standing there. And this Malacca. I swear to god, I have never hated anyone so much in my life. I of course got scared as shit and immediately started to recruit another army. But since I suffer from a stupid brain, I accidentally recruited the Lord in the settlement right next to this blue bastard. This was bad for two reasons. Reason 1. I had no recruitment buildings in that province. Reason 2. He was right fucking there. But I managed to scrape together some regiment of renown as well as some slayers and the next turn I went after him. He ran away like a coward, that let's focus on killing the wood orc. And so I attacked Castle Drakenhof. I mean Vlad wasn't there, did I not say that the pincer maneuver was gonna work? Anyways, I was now moving into Skavenland to take my first piece of that ruined ass. And in two turns I had taken two settlements from the rats and Ikit Claw was running away as usual. Back in the empire Vlad had now been overwhelmed by our superior medieval costling skills and the next turn he was dead. The few turns after that were spent going from settlement to settlement taking all of Ikit Claw's land. But of course, as I'm thinking that everything is going great, two random rat armies just appear behind me and they take back one of their former settlements. And just when I think that was my biggest problem, the blue f***ing bastard appeared again to take more of my settlements. But I had planned for this, because the moment Vlad was dead, I sent my Sylvanian army back to the mountains to defend against this little emo dwarf. Back in Skavenland, I managed to set up an ambush, which they walked right into. And after that, I turned to the last Skaven army. But because the auto result casualties were so high, I just sat there, waiting for them to make a move. And during the next turn, I caught this Malacca when he was trying to flee. Again. After the auto resolve became a little bit better, I took care of the rats and I was once again back on track, moving towards Wasag. But Belagar also wanted some of that Wasag ass, so after taking out Ikit completely, we both attacked him and every settlement I stole from Wasag were sold back to Belagar so that I could spend all my focus murdering this Malaka. I also did the last story mission, because I forgot to do that for some reason before, and Angrim just ran in all alone against, well, a lot of people, while the rest of my army just threw big balls at the enemy. It was a one-sided victory and solely because of my superior military tactics and stuff. The next turn Wasag himself attacked me, he did not win and I just kept on robbing him of his real estate and kept on giving the settlements I stole to Balagar. And after taking all the nearby settlements I crossed the long water thing by going under it. Ta-da! I was now in the desert. And I'll just take that real quick. Oh, and just let me borrow this for a moment. Were you using that? Because I really want that. And of course, while I was bullying Warsag, that blue mother was back at it, running around in my lands. He did not make it very far this time. Or so I thought. But he took back this goddamn settlement again. Anyways, Warsag only had two more settlements left. And I was running towards them faster than that guy in the meatball movie. Here is me, taking the first settlement. And Belagor the f***ing ass, he took Warsag's last settlement. But I guess that's it. We have walked around the Misty Mountains while singing songs that encouraged mass extinction to the orcs. I mean, it kinda worked. Thanks to my YouTube members for supporting me, and thank you for watching. Later.